It's time. <laughs> what is going on today, everybody? Welcome back to Fix It Garage. And that's right, it is time. It is time to take on the most ambitious project that I've ever tackled outside of this shop while being put on camera. As you know, the most ambitious project that we've had in here so far is the Subaru Beetle, and that is just the beginning. But we're gonna take a project on outside of this shop. It's the most ambi ambitious project I've done outside of here, and it's also one of the craziest projects I've taken on. This thing has everything you need for a storybook vehicle build. It has its highs, its lows, its great successes, and it's very epic failures. And you guys will get to see all of it. The good, the bad, the ugly, and we're gonna talk about some of the mistakes I make along the way, which there are plenty of, but you're also gonna see the great success of this project. But that's enough about me just hinting at it. What is this project? Well, this is a project on a Toyota Tundra. For me, this is one of the epic Tundra builds. This, this for me is something that I would do if it was my own. What all are we doing to it? Well, we're doing a lot. The basis behind this truck is we are going to be making a lifted, supercharged Toyota Tundra. That's right, supercharged. We're going to take the factory V8 and we're going to put a massive Magnuson supercharger on it. And we're going to lift it using very nice Fox suspension. But it isn't that simple. You see, when we got the truck, we found a major flaw with it. And that was in the frame. Now the frame is extremely important in a truck like this because it is what holds the truck together. Your cab, your engine, and your bed bolt to it and make your truck. So if anything's wrong with it, that could be compromised when you start throwing more horsepower at it. And we are throwing quite a bit more power at this thing, so there's always that risk of things breaking. Well, this was two frames welded together, and that is a recipe for disaster. Yes, you can weld two frames together, but this one was done poorly. So what is the best solution? Replace the frame. And that is in fact what we are doing. We are going to be replacing the frame of this Toyota Tundra while doing our lift kit, our supercharger, and many other upgrades along the way, both to make it better and for cosmetics. And I'll be showing you guys all of the different parts as we move through this truck build. And you'll also find out why the videos are finally coming out now. When I started on this truck four months ago. When I started on this truck four months ago, I set out with one goal. Rebuild this truck in one week. And I'll tell you right now up front, we failed. However, we're gonna show you why we failed. We're going to show you how we came back to build the ultimate Tundra. Without further ado, guys, we're going to jump right into the first video of the truck. Hope you guys enjoy. Alrighty, guys, real quick before we get started on that Tundra build, just wanna let you guys know to pop over to my Twitch channel where I am going to be live streaming some video games a few nights a week. Be sure to go and give that a follow. I'll link that down in the description box below. Now go enjoy today's video, everybody. All right, so here we go. We are starting on this truck project. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tear apart the interior because underneath the carpet are the bolts to remove the cab from the frame. And of course, in order to get to those bolts, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to remove the seats. So we're gonna pull all of those heavy, pesky seats out, and then we can start gutting the rest of the interior so we can get out the carpet so we can get the cab off.
With the carpet removed, here is one of the bolts that we need to undo in order to remove the cab from the frame. With the interior fully gutted, the next thing I went on to do was tear apart the front of the truck. Part of this was to get room so I could work on like pulling the radiators and other components, but also because I knew all that stuff would have to come off anyways if I wanted to pull the cab. So it made sense to start off with everything that was out in front of the truck just to make getting to everywhere else under the hood that much easier. Moving on to something that I am very comfortable with, engine work. Tearing apart anything to do with an engine, I'm very comfortable with. So in order to get this cab off, we needed to separate things from the engine and frame from the cab, like the electrics, the cooling system, the fuel system, etc. We need to separate everything from the cab. So when we lift the cab off, it comes off smoothly and there's no hangups with like a random fuel line or an electrical connector. And me personally, I always like starting off with the electrics and working my way to the other systems, going one system at a time to try and make sure that I don't forget anything. As it turns out, disconnecting everything to remove the cab from the engine and frame is surprisingly easy. It's very easy for me to find all of the different disconnection points to disconnect the engine and frame from the cab. After I got everything under the hood done, I made sure that our brake lines, our parking brake, and our shift selector were all disconnected. Then it was time to go on to removing the bed. Separated the fuel filler neck, undo six bolts and the bed is ready to remove.
With the help of a skilled forklift operator, we were able to safely remove the bed without doing any damage to it or to the cab. With the bed off, we were just six bolts away from freedom. All I had to do was unbolt those six bolts that hold the cab to the frame, and the frame was ready to come off. the cab off, we had ourselves a Toyota Tundra skateboard. It looks pretty cool without the cab and the bed on there. It straight up looks like a skateboard with an engine. If I could, I would love to just have hooked up a steering wheel and a gas pedal and ran it like this. But with the cab off, we could see the full extent of the damage to that frame. Like how the fact that the tops of the frame weren't even welded when they welded these two frames together. This is exactly why we are putting a different frame underneath this truck. Just look at how bad those welds are. I would not want to add a supercharger to this and have that going on underneath the truck. That is asking for trouble. Now it's time to start tearing the frame apart. First thing we need to do is we need to work on getting out the engine, driveline, and the gas tank.
With the fuel tank and driveline removed, it was time to tackle the engine. We needed to unhook everything that connected the engine, transmission, and transfer case to the frame so we could pull it out and set it aside so we could do our frame swap. With the help of our expert forklift driver, it was time to pull out the engine, transmission, and transfer case. We pulled them out and set them on a table for later, keeping it all as one complete unit, which will make it easier for reinstalling it into our new frame. All right, so as you just saw, we got the engine out of the frame, and that is going to be where we stop for today. In the next video, we're going to get the old frame, sh frame stripped and start installing brand new parts on the new frame and get that thing ready to go back underneath the truck. But that is going to do it for today. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. As always, if you like what you saw, don't forget to smash that like button. Leave some comments down below and subscribe so you guys don't miss the end of this crazy truck build. Trust me, you're going to want to see this thing all the way to the end. But I want to thank all you guys for watching. Don't forget to go check out my Twitch channel to come see me play some games with friends and we can hang out, have some shenanigans and have a good time. But thank you guys all for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.